this point in my life, I've like broken down exactly how I like to view all of my content across all of my different devices. I like a CRT TV old school for my old consoles and video games. I like computer monitors, but also a CRT monitor for my for my gaming on my PC. I like a curved monitor for my main screen. And then when it comes to watching movies and also just playing some other video games on the couch and stuff like that, I prefer a projector. Now, when I moved to my latest apartment, the projector wouldn't fit. I've got a projector that requires about 15, 16 feet of throw distance. I didn't have anywhere to put it. I it just didn't work out. I couldn't figure it out and they wouldn't allow me to mount it to the ceiling. So I had this projector and I've still got it and it's nice. It's a 1080p projector, but I was really upset that I couldn't use it. So I've been using this really old Sony 1080p TV and it's okay, but like, you know, it's just, it's when you're not using it, it's just big giant thing that takes up a lot of space. It's not very pretty in my opinion. And it does the job when you're just sitting back on the couch and watching stuff. But you know, I always, still wanted that projector you know like i know when i finally moved to my main place i'm i'm going back to a projector it's just there's there's no experience that's the same as like watching some movies or something like that on a huge screen in your own house it's like having your own movie theater and then paris roan contacted me and they were like hey do you want to do a, a sponsored video and I looked at the Indiegogo campaign like in the past that they'd done, saw that it was successful. Then I started looking at the technology. This is a 4K short throw projector, meaning that you have a 150 inch screen and all you have to do is just put this on a little shelf in front of the wall or in front of your projector screen, 18.8 inches away, but you can slide this all the way up to 5.4 inches away. Now the screen will get larger and smaller depending on how close or how far away you put the projector. It'll allow you to mount it either on the table or on the ceiling. Now the other thing that's different from my old projector, this thing is 2000 lumens. So it was way brighter than I expected. I never even really thought about a short throw projector. I don't, I don't know why. I just, I guess I always thought maybe they were like in sort of a luxury category and maybe this is in like a luxury category but for someone who wants the luxury of having something so fancy you know it's hard to argue with the quality that comes out of it so 4k 60 hertz just to start off this is a projector it's very difficult to capture the way it looks using the cameras that i have i'm not sure if there's some maybe a red camera or something that would actually capture it but it's very difficult to give you the same experience when you're watching on your screen being captured through my cameras there's some weird banding and stuff like that because my cameras can't capture it perfectly it looks different i'm going to try to describe it but it looks different in in person than it does through the cameras and stuff like that and also my walls are textured so whenever i shoot it straight onto the wall if you look closely it looks a little bit like an oil painting it gives it an artistic quality but really you should be have you should have like a fancy projector screen unfortunately i don't have time to get one right now because i'm in japan while you're watching this but by the time I get back, I'll, I'll grab a better screen so that I can I can watch it with a smoother quality. But as it is, it already looks ridiculously amazing and I'll do my best to try to capture it so you can see what it looks like. But again, my cameras are not HDR, this is. My cameras don't have the same color that this does. So it's just, it's not gonna be the same. Just know that it looks better and I'll try to describe it as best I can without, you know, like to be, being too sensational. So here we have a 4K 60 hertz projector. Well, this will go to 150 inches. I don't have room in my apartment for that. So I'm just doing like an 80 inch screen, which looks weird and kind of curls on the edges. Don't get a really cheap screen for your premium projector. Don't do that. Get a nice screen. I should have got the Paris Rowan screen that like rises up. It's beautiful, but for my next place, I'll get it. Right now I'm just gonna project it onto the wall, which is textured. Anyway, don't do what I did and get a cheap screen because it curls and has wrinkles and stuff. Still looks pretty good. I would recommend a cheap screen like this if you wanna take it camping with your friends because you totally could just take this thing camping with your friends. It's small, put it on a little shelf or on a, on a log in front of this inexpensive screen that you just fold out and put up and you can watch movies while you're chilling in the middle of the woods play video games play whatever you want to play on this it'll play video games just fine you've got a 50 millisecond response time so i did test this with a bunch of different video games you need to make sure you go into the settings and make sure it's on the fastest setting so that it's not you know there's no input lag but once you do that 50 millisecond input lag is just below what i would think most humans could can like feel 
A little bit higher than that would be too high. And if you're someone who's doing extreme Twitch gaming, you're still probably on a tiny little TN screen with 240 hertz displays or on a CRT. So this is really for people who are playing like sports games, chilling on the couch, playing old games, playing con you know playing console games. I mean, you can play FPS games and stuff like this, uh, you know, just fine. It's just that it's not going to be the same as like a 240 hertz, you, you know, ridiculously fast computer monitor because it's not exactly what it's for. It's about the experience of having this huge display on the screen. So playing RPGs and playing immersive games or even just playing strategy games and stuff like that. You know, it has a 25,000 hour bulb. So, I mean, you could even just use this as your as your computer monitor. And the HDR stuff looks very good with HDR10, but the brightness, 2,000 lumens. The thing about having a 2,000 lumen um, 25,000 hour bulb is the fact that you can watch this thing during the day. I was actually a little shocked when I turned it on and realized how bright it was. It's brighter than my TV as I actually turned down the brightness a little bit for nighttime because it was like vividly bright. Um, you know, like during the daytime, turn on the lights at night, whatever. It doesn't doesn't matter. Like you can turn on the lights and it still it looks like you're watching like an LCD or something like that, except it's a you know, it's a laser projector. So in my opinion, it looks better than the LCDs. I also want to talk about the speakers on the inside because when I first plugged it in and got stuff playing, um, you know, I was listening to the speakers and all that sort of thing, and I didn't even notice that the HDMI default, like I have a, you know, my, I have a computer hooked up and I've got like some nice speakers and stuff with a subwoofer and everything, and I plugged up the HDMI and my computer defaulted to the Paris Roan 4K projector. So the the sound that was coming out that I was just like hanging out and like listening to was coming out of the projector, and I didn't realize it at first until I got to a point where I was like, there's not as much bass as normal, but the speakers were really clear. So that's coming straight out of there. I'm moving the mic back and forth, but that's coming straight out of there. <laughs> so I laughed at him and he said, I bet you won't either. So before I could think twice, it ran right up to the edge, did a cartwheel right off. That sounds better than most TVs, in my opinions. This is a really nice projector for sports, and there's a few different reasons, but you could just take this to your friend's house. It's way smaller than carrying around the TV, set it up in like just a matter of seconds, have it projecting on their wall while you're having a full-on party. Or you could have the party at your house, of course. But, you know, it's re gonna be really good for gatherings and stuff like that, family getting together to watch movies, um, especially during like the holiday season and stuff, everybody gets together. It, it's basically turns your place into a, a theater. You know, if you're taking it to somebody else's house, you're not gonna have to worry about taking your speakers. You can either plug it up to their speakers or just use the speakers that are integrated into the unit because it's plenty loud and plenty clear especially for sports, you know, where it's like you don't really need the subwoofers and then the full on surround sound experience. Speaking of sports, under advanced settings, we have our MEMC. Now, this is a smoothing technology that I highly recommend for sports and some gaming. What it does, if you have uh, a signal coming in that's lower than 60 FPS or whatever, it's like a low, low FPS signal, it can actually use some intelligent technology to add in frames that were never there before to make it look smoother. So instead of having motion blur, it makes it look a lot smoother. Now use this for sports so you can see like crystal clear movement. Do not use this for movies and stuff because it gives them kind of a weird soap opera effect, especially the older movies that were shot in like 24 frames per second. You know, we, we don't want to do that. So I'll keep it off for that, but on for sports. I don't really watch sports, so I just keep it off, but on for games. Now, speaking of like other technologies that it comes with, the lamp on this is weird. This laser lamp that shoots lasers onto the wall, I couldn't, you, it's really hard to see the beam of light. Like with my older projector, you see this ginormous beam of light going across the room. And sometimes it's so bright because I had it sitting on the coffee table in front of me projecting like 15 feet across the room. And sometimes in the really bright scenes, the just the light coming out of the projector was so bright that it was almost distracting. Whereas with the Paris Roan, uh, I almost see no light. I don't, it's hard to see anything. So sometimes it's so hard to see the light that you can, you know, you'll get distracted and you'll get up close and you'll lean over the projector to like look at it and like get in front of it or whatever. Like my head is like over top of it. It's like, Hey, you're gonna blind yourself, you you goof. So it has an eye protection mode. You just press any button and it'll go back to the whatever you're watching. Let's talk about the inputs and outputs on the back. We have a standard power port. It's a Mickey Mouse port. I wanna note that the cable's not very long. It's like three or four feet, but I wish there was a little bit longer of a cable. That's my only gripe with the entire system. So that's a very minor gripe because you can always get a different cable. We've got our USB on the back. We've got two HDMI on the back that support 4K. Then we have an audio out. So if you wanna run this to something else, 
uh, a LAN input. There's also Wi-Fi built in. And then we have AV if you want to play like some old school stuff. You just get an AV dongle and plug it up back there. And the AV dongle will only give you composite. Um, but that'll look okay for like old school games and stuff like that, especially when it's projected up on the wall. And then you can turn on the motion smoothing and it'll look really nice. Let's talk for just a minute about the... Um, Let's talk for just a minute about the network capabilities on this because you have Wi-Fi and you also have the regular network, but there's also Bluetooth so you can hook it up to your phone and stuff like that. It does support being able to just swipe the videos from your phone onto the screen. Totally works fine. Um, and it'll also let you like play back the audio and stuff from your phone. But the interesting thing about the network here on this is it didn't require a network connection. I know there's a lot of devices out there that are these smart devices that won't even do anything until you plug them in and that's annoying. It doesn't have to be a smart device, but they've been very smart about how they apply their smarts to this device. It's just running Android 9 and there's 30 gigs of memory on the inside. Multi-screen allows you to take your phone and then put videos from your phone straight on to the 4K projector. We've got the applications market I'll show you in a second. But let's go through a few of the settings here. So if you can see under the audio, we've got a built-in speaker, but we also can have it output to Bluetooth, which is really cool. We can also pick our output device SP diff or just the audio out or whatever. And then we can change the AV sync if there's ever an issue. You can match it up. Got our network settings, which includes Wi-Fi and the wire connections. If you can hook this up to wired, that's going to be awesome for like streaming high quality 4K content directly from your NAS and stuff like that. Add your Bluetooth devices here. And again, it can both pair with your phone, but it can also pair with external speakers. Personalization options, you can turn on the screen saver and stuff like that, but let's go Keystone correction. Whoa, that's bright. Sorry, that's probably really bright for everybody. Keystone correction, it give you eight points. Makes it very easy to line everything up. This has electronic focus. And then projection mode lets you pick, you know, if you want to have a rear projection, front projection, or if you want to mount it like on the ceiling or something like that. All right, now let's really show you what I like about this. The application market is really cool since it's running on Android. Now this, this isn't hooked up to a Google account, so some of these pieces of software won't work without the Google account, but a lot of them will. A lot of them will work just fine without a Google account, so I'll show you some of those that work. Um, Cartoon Network is cool. God, this makes my heart hurt. And then we have Jellyfin. Jellyfin is MB. It's an open source, better version of MB, and it's kind of like Plex, but I like it better. I've made a video on this, and this is my copy. Let me just show you something. I, I can run this at 4K and it plays back from the NAS. It takes a couple seconds to seek if you, you know, here and there. It's a little faster. Right now it's on Wi-Fi, but it's a little faster when it's not on Wi-Fi. But as long as you're just hitting play and not doing a ton of seeking, it's totally fine to, to use the Wi-Fi. But I still highly recommend that you plug it up with an Ethernet jack. Another thing that's nice about the brightness is I have some lamps on in this room. You can't even tell. The lamps are behind me and they're they're on and it's not changing the way anything looks. Normally, if I turn a lamp on with a regular projector, suddenly it's like, oh, it's hard to see everything, but not with this one. So with this, I don't even need a computer. I'm using Jellyfin right on the device because it's got like some internal, it's got some internal computing power. Enough to run that, that was, that was X.265 4K, and it was running just fine. This is what I'm currently watching, these two going back and forth. Right now, this is set up in my bedroom because I wanted to show a bigger screen than I could fit into my other room. And I'm going to try not to leave this in here because I'll never sleep. <laughs> I'll just use it. Now on the sides of the unit, you'll see that there are a couple of different adjustments. And that is to adjust the feet on the front so that you can angle your, you know, your unit up and down depending on the surface or depending on how you're trying to angle it to project correctly. I know a lot of times with projectors, you're used to using like an analog wheel to adjust the focus. This one does digital focus. So you just go into the menu and I found that I have, have not had to do any focusing whatsoever when I moved it forward and back. I don't know why. It's just crystal clear all the time. So it's got like a range of focus that it's just it's just in focus. Let's go through a few more of the specs here. It's got a 3000 to one contrast ratio. Again, it's 80 inches to 150 inches. I was able to make it smaller than 80 inches and it looked pretty good. And I pushed it too close to the wall. It was it didn't look out of focus and it worked, but the top of the screen was starting to bend a little and look a little weird, but it looked OK. But yeah, 50, 80 to 150 inches officially is what is what it will um, support. The speakers, you have two 25 watt speakers. It will decode Dolby Audio and DIS HD. So the audio output is 3.5 millimeter and you also have the SP diff. The unit's dimensions are 425 by 335 by 100 millimeters. That's 16.73 by 13.93, 19 by 3.94 inches, seven kilograms, which is 15.4 uh, pounds. It's substantial. I mean, it's a lot, lot smaller 
than a, than a television set or something like that but it's, it's a big unit because it needs to be a big unit it's got a lot of power going on in there another thing that's pretty interesting compared to my older projector this thing is virtually silent there's a little bit of a spin up you can hear when it first starts but as soon as you hit play you you don't hear it anymore all right next i want to talk a little bit about the company itself because i wasn't familiar with it and i asked for some information on the company so they sent me over the story and i'm going to share a little bit of that with you just because it's France and I've got a little bit of France in me. So uh, back in the 1900s in 1915, they created the brand. Their their slogan was bettering your life. In 1925, they created a vacuum cleaner. In 1941, they created an electric tricycle. And all this was created in a small town called Villeurbanne. I believe that's how you say it. It's just outside of Lyon. Now, I, this was a thing where I was like, oh, this is cool because my, my family and my mom's side is from Lyon like 500 years ago. Then they moved to Scotland like 500 years ago. But way back, my mother's you know family's last name is Lyon. It's cool to see something like this originate in an area like that right there in the edge of the Alps in Lyon uh, in Villeurbanne. Is that how you say? I don't. I can't speak French, but I'm doing as as good of a job as I can. Pour tous les croque-mocs, la vie est devenue impossible depuis qu'elle a son nouveau traîneau Paris Rhone. Anyway, so 1940s, they made an electric tricycle, and it could go up to 40 miles. So you could do this in 1940. 1952, they, you know, they expanded, were making coffee grinders, industrial vacuum cleaners. Uh, they, they built a big 5,000 square meter, two floor building, and, and they were doing all kinds of stuff. And then in the 1970s, they started doing kitchen appliances, uh, basically household department store type appliances. And they had a dishwasher. Um, as, as well, like electric knives, all kinds of stuff. In the 80s, they started making stick vacuums as well as canister vacuums, and they had a pretty good percentage of the French market, like 20% of the French market with their stick vacuums. They also had utensils and uh, all kinds of other things. After that, they decided to like expand, like do like a global expansion, and now their products are sold in over 30 countries, including this one that you're watching it in right now. So my main takeaway from this product is, you know, I originally got it and I thought, okay, I'll check it out and now I'm like, okay, I have to figure out how I can package this up so if I move to Japan, I have to be able to take this with me. At this point, I don't know how I'm going to be able to function without a short throw projector. I didn't know. I didn't know. I just had a regular projector. I didn't know how much better this was going to be. I expected it to be louder. I expected to be able to see a huge beam of light coming out of the front and it, make it, and it was going to be blinding. None of that was the case. It's so quiet. It looks so clean. I'm almost frustrated about how much I know that I'm always going to need something like this because I'm always like thinking I should downsize. But now it's like, this is something I have to have. Wherever I move, I have to have this short throw projector. So it's coming with me wherever I'm going, even though it's, you know, it's 15 pounds, it's not too big. It's one of those things where it's like, it's gonna be worth it if I can't like fit it in my suitcase to mail it to myself wherever I'm moving after I move out of the country. I'm in Japan right now while you're watching this, just checking around, seeing if I can find a spot. And, and wherever I check, I'm gonna go in and be like, hmm, where would I put the Paris Rhone? Where am I gonna put my short throw projector? <laughs> so that's what it's done to me. Uh, it's kind of funny, but it, it, it is what it is. Oh. They've got some they've got some contests going on. They wanted me to mention since they're sponsoring, I said yes, of course. But you know, the sponsorships give away some gift cards and stuff. They're all done on Facebook. If you're on Facebook, I, I don't go on to Facebook that much, but if if you're still on Facebook, then you can check out the links in the description right now. There's a couple things going on, like right now with the world like a, there's a competition going on with the World Cup where you can share some comments on which two teams you're looking forward to, uh, who's your greatest of all time, and that sort of stuff. Share those comments. Um, and then get like 50 shares on your comments, then you might be able to get a, a gift card. I'm not sure all the rules, but all this is in the description. And then after that, like in, in the next month, there's going to be a different contest going on, like a meme contest, I think it is. You can also win some gift cards and some other things. Uh, there's some Instagram links and some Facebook links all in the description. So go down there and check it out. Say thanks to Paris Roan for, for doing some contests and stuff like that. But I, I do want to say thank you to them for sponsoring this video. And I didn't realize how much I needed a short throw projector. <laughs> it's like, but hey, at least I don't have to have a television set anymore. I can use a, a short throw projector and clear up some space on my wall. Now, the thing I need to do is figure out how to get a screen that I can mount five or six inches off the wall. So I can, and it needs to be like one of those screens that, well, I guess I could put one on the desk that goes up because I want to be able to put artwork behind it. I don't like empty walls. They don't make me happy. So artwork behind it, then a screen in front that goes up or a screen on top that you pull down over top of the artwork. And then you have a spot 
that's that's completely functional all the time because whenever there's a big ugly tv there and it's turned off that area is just not functional and it's ugly but if there's a projector screen and this you know paris rome projector sitting on a on a table in front of it or even mounted on the ceiling on top shooting short throw onto the wall or onto the projector screen you can use that space to put up artwork or books or anything and then have the screen in front of it so i think it's a much much more sophisticated way to live in my opinion i'm old so i guess that makes me sophisticated right anyway check it out all the links are in the description hope you enjoyed the video and i'm gonna go watch probably some 90s anime on this super fancy projector it's i'm in the middle of the slayers so that's what's that's what's gonna happen it's awesome see you in the comments <laughs>